Hello and welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. This is episode number two. I am very excited to continue. There's something about this game that just it's just it's got me. It's got me interested in what's going on. So at the end of the last episode, we were trying to find out about uh, Mr. Shoulder, who is uh, a man who has invited us to this village. Um, and we're trying to find out about him. He hasn't showed up. We were supposed to meet him here in this pub. He didn't show up. And we were speaking to one of the locals, uh, Mr. Tillett, I think his name was, um, who was going to tell us all about uh, Mr. Shoulder. Uh, Leonard Shoulder, I think his name was. Um, but the guy was a little bit drunk, and we bought him a drink, and it was kind of a bad thing. He went to the toilet in here and never came back. We went in to look for him. He wasn't there, but we think we hear something outside, so we need to go investigate. So that's what we're going to be doing now. We're going to go outside, see if we can get around the back of the pub and uh, investigate what's going on. Cool, it's really gotten dark and uh, bad out here. So it looks like, let's see if we can get around this way. Let's have a look. So there is... There's an X over this way, but we should. Can we not just get around? Maybe we can go around this way. Too far. Mr. Shoulder may still show up, and I don't wish to miss him. Okay, but what I want to try and do is get around the back. Maybe we can go this way. That make more sense. Excuse me, sir. Oh, there's the alleyway. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff here. This glove is the first thing I want to a look at. A single glove is lying in the mud. Okay, well, let's grab that. A pearly white gents glove. It's certainly unlike anything Mr. Tillett was wearing. Yeah, I was trying to think, was he wearing any gloves? But I uh, don't think he was. It seems rather out of place here. Peculiar. Okay, so we've got the glove. This is our inventory at the top here. So we've got some letters, which were the letters sent to us by Leonard Shoulder inviting us here. We have a handkerchief, the key to our room, some matches, and now a glove. Sturdy looking barrels. No doubt used to store ale. Okay. The post has been embellished with a fine bronze bust of a horse. Okay. So this is the door to the toilet. The door leads into the rear of the inn. See so if we can open hmm. it from this side. Someone has wedged the door shut. Mr. Tillett. Why would he have done that? Okay. Did Mr. Tillett leave, then block the door behind him? Something strange is going on here. Yeah, it certainly is. Who was that old chap I saw outside the alley? He headed eastward. Maybe I could catch up with him and ask him if he saw Mr. Tillett. Okay, we'll go back outside. So, just make sure we're searching everything here. There's a window here. A warm glow permeates from within, making me feel somewhat cold and damp. Yeah, they've done a really good job with the feel. It, it, it feels cold, it feels damp. I want to get inside. But we have a job to do, so I guess we want to go this way, to try and follow that man we saw. There he is. Sir? Oh, now what's he doing? Oh, that, that light just went off. Okay, well, let's follow the man, because we, we try not to lose him. It could be the key to this. Oh, wow. The old wow. man has disappeared into the darkness. I'd best turn back to the inn. Okay. So, what about... Uh, A humble local dwelling. Do we want to try knocking door to door? I don't wish to go knocking door to door. Okay, let's just ask him. Right, well, let's go back then. There's nothing else here. Um... So she's still not wanting to go any further. I shouldn't wander too far. Yeah. Mr. Shoulder may still show up and I don't wish to miss him. What is this plaque? A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. Okay. Uh, looks like we can wander around the village here. Oh, I can barely see anything. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything here. So there are some other doors. A local dwelling. 
Yeah, so I don't think you should kind of want to... I don't wish to disturb the locals. No, what about this? There is a light on at this building, so they are awake. Maybe we could... The cobbler's is closed. All right, fair, fair enough. The door has been boarded up. The building looks like a ruin. Okay, it's very difficult to see. I'm waiting to see kind of ghosts in the background or something. Uh, the, the, so the blacksmith looks closed. Yeah, it looks closed. It was closed earlier anyway. I shouldn't wander too far. All right, that's fine. So, okay, I guess we're going to have to go back to... Can we actually... Do we want this bucket? The bucket is rusty and full of holes. No, she doesn't want the bucket. Um, okay, we'll go back to the inn. Maybe we'll be, perhaps speak to the, the barkeep. Maybe he'll know where, um, oh, there we go, last orders. Last orders. I should get some sleep. Finding the missing men of Beaulieu shall have to wait for tomorrow. Okay, well, if I can just talk to him first. How can I help you? Have you seen Arthur Tillett? I thought he were with you. He went to the lavatory and has not returned. <laughs> That sounds like Arthur Tillett. Don't worry, lass. He'll be back. Thanks for your time. As you were. Okay. Fair enough, then. I don't suppose there's anything else. Nobody else has uh, left in the bar now. Okay, let's go Kenneth to bed, then. Kenneth will be arriving tomorrow at midday. I should get some sleep. Uh, yeah, let's go to yes, bed. Yes, I must get some sleep. I shall track down Mr. Shoulder tomorrow. Seems fair. Miss Bateman? Yes? Off to bed? Yes. I'm afraid Mr. Shoulders let me down. The rotter. Perhaps he will make himself known tomorrow. I should hope so. This is turning into a waste of my time. Ah, don't mind the locals, miss. It's just that we don't get a lot of visitors in Bewley. Quite. They mean well, believe me. Sure, Mr. Kemp. Please, call me Stanley. Good night, Stanley. Sleep well, Miss Bateman. So hopefully it'll uh, stop raining. Okay, watch out for ghosts. Oh, there we go. Ghost. I'm telling you. It's a cat. There's Mr. Tillett. He is a werecat. Okay, he's come to wreck us. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> no. We're dead. You have died. <laughs> okay. First day. Achievement unlocked. We survived the first day. Okay, the cat's never to be seen now. Such horrid dreams. Oh, you think that was a dream, do you? I'm not so sure. Bolted from the inside, just as I left it last night. Oh, come mm. on. Okay, devil cat. As I suspected, I must have dreamt of that wretched looking cat. I must say I'm relieved. Right then. Let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillett. Okay. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. Fair enough. All right, well, let's go then. Good morning, Miss Bateman. Good day, Stanley. Did you sleep well, Miss Bateman? Um, okay, lie, be polite, or tell the truth. I should tell him about that cat. Um... Uh, let's, let's go. Let's be truthful. Not really. I have the rather queer recollection of a cat entering my room last night. A cat, you say? 
Yes, an odd-looking grey one. I must have been dreaming, as I locked the door and windows before I went to sleep. I saw a similar cat in the lavatories while searching for Mr. Tillett. Ah, Herbert. Oh, he's a harmless thing. He comes in now and then searching for scraps. Indeed. Seeing him in the lavatories must have conjured up the strange dream. The mind is capable of manifesting frightful things, Miss Beerman. As I'm, I'm sure we'll find to out. The rain of yesterday has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Crisp. Nice. I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving today? His train will get in around midday. Kenneth will also be bringing my excavation equipment. Oh, I. What does that entail? Picks, shovels, buckets, lighting and such. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the inn for any such bulky items. Um, yeah, let's not sort of be too rude here. That sounds capital. Thank you. You're most welcome, Miss Bateman. We look after our guests here at the Plough and Furrow. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Miss Bateman? Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. Mm -hmm. I've been tossing and turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. What on earth are you talking about? As you know, I like to run an honest establishment. And well, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. Oh, here we go. You do? I do. Many here do. There are stories tied to that place, you know. If I've learned anything in this life, it's that some stones are best left unturned. Old Leonard's shoulder is someone to be wary of, too. I can't tell you what to do, lass, but you'd best avoid him. Okay, interesting. Um, let's do the, well, the immediate things, Mr. Shoulder. Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. A man not to be trusted. Okay. Um, let's find out that in the moment. Okay, Hobbs Barrow. Why lie Barrow. to me about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass, I know. I feel dreadful. But why? What are these stories you speak of? I really can't tell you more. If you insist on visiting that place, you'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you here. He should be the one to tell you. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. I pride myself on being a woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, seek out Mr. Shoulder. He can tell you more. Okay, well, where does he live? Where does Mr. Shoulder live? I can't say for sure. As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. Certainly not in the village itself. Might someone around Bewley be able to help me find him? You could ask around. As I say, lass, Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. Where is Hobbs Barrow? I, I don't know. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. Hmm. I now find that hard to believe. The moors are vast, lass. I tend not to go wandering out there. A grown man could lose himself and not be seen again. Hmm. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. Okay, interesting. So there's a bit of a secret uh, to this, this village. It seems I may be fighting a battle against some sort of local superstition. Is there a single barrow in England that doesn't have some ghastly tail oh. attached to it? Hogwash. All of it. I have a few hours until Kenneth arrives. I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. Oh, map unlocked. Let's have a quick look. We have uh, access to a map. So we can go to the railway station and the beauty village square. They're the only places we have unlocked at the moment. So I like that. So I like kind of a fast travel. Why we have this very sinister looking picture of an eye, <laughs> I don't know, but that's fine. Ooh. Let's. He looks like a rather shady character. Then I best we speak to him then.
Hello. My name is Thomasina, and you are... Now then, that's none of your concern, love. Hmm. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? I don't know out about no Leonard Shoulder. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Not to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows then? Don't concern yourself. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get much out of this guy. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around, dear love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. What do you do around here? Hey, oh, you're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard, dig the graves. Ha! What can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Quite. Goodbye. <laughs> there are. Wow, we, know, we learned so much there. These flowers look pretty. Someone must take good care of them. Okay. There's definitely someone making noise around here. Do I really want to be going to the alley? Oh. Dog marching. Wow, the sound is really good. Birds singing. Very atmospheric. So, so I heard someone sighing or yawning. Oh, here we go. The little whelp looks determined to slaughter the very air itself. Okay, this guy's yawning. The young oh, the woman looks woman. extremely bored by it all. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's live another day. Hello, miss. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Betty. Nice to meet you, Betty. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> okay. What are you up to? My brother is practicing his sword fighting technique. I'm to watch him until he ties himself out. I'm tireless! <laughs> this time last month it were all about his teaspoon collection. This month it's swords. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Our parents don't like us talking to strangers, miss. So you know of it? No. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, okay. miss. I'm not going to get much out of them. Hello? E yes? Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. Mm. <sighs> My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. It's a pleasure to meet you, Douglas. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the lantern worm. <laughs> What's that? What is the lantern worm? It's gonna come back and get us all. John Lantern thought he killed it at the River Ware, but my father told me it still lives. <sighs> we must all be prepared. The lantern worm isn't real, Douglas. Father just told you that to get you out of his air. Not true! I saw it slithering out by the beck. Like a giant eel it were. I ran home so fast I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. My brother has a vivid imagination. Children often do at his age. I'll keep training! You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly! Douglas, <laughs> this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. I don't know, I think it's quite fun. Who's Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. Okay. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. Yeah, we Don't saw you that. you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master oh. swordsman by then. Sure. Do you like living in Bewley? Yeah, I do. Are you from the city? I'm from a long way away. You must have come on the train. I love watching all the steam puff up into the sky. Have you been on the train yourself? No, miss. Our parents don't have the money for train tickets. Father says we have all we need here in Beulah. <sighs> Perhaps this nice lady would like to take you away with her on the train. <laughs> no, I need to stay and protect Beulah from the lantern worm. Have you heard of Hobbs Barrow? What's that? A local burial mound. Our parents don't let us wander far from the village. What's a burial mound? Don't you mind about that, Douglas. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. 
Okay, nice kids. Uh, right, well, uh, we've got the lead. Um, we could go investigate the, the church, but let's see if... Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the blacksmith. The blacksmith is toiling away. Let's see if we can speak to him. Find out more about this worm. Okay. Yes. Mr. Crozier, I presume. Aye, George Crozier, at your service. My name is Thomasina. Aye, can I help you? Um, well, let's cut to the chase. Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, aye, old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? <sighs> no, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. But do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Mm. Can't tell you out more than that. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Might not be that much help. Moors are pretty big. Are you a Bewley native, Mr. Crozier? <sighs> Aye, born and bred. This were my father's forge before mine. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes and farmers needing tools. You'll let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Do you know of a local landmark named Hobbs Barrow? There's a fair many barrows found out on the moors, lass. Too many to put a name to. Not oh. a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. What can you tell me about Bewley? We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. I've heard about London. What have you heard? Plenty of factories there. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. Oh. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next one is tomorrow. How delightful. Unless your vice is cabbages, they'll be nought to interest a young lady. I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Okay, found out a little bit of information there, but... Uh, it's Mr. Crozier's much. forge. A fantastic specimen. Oh, what is that? Alas, it is not mine to take. No, we can't take anything. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the, the church then. Oh, here we go. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Memorial plaques of the trowel over there. Old woman in cakes. That's where I'd go straight away. The woman has a kind face. Well, let's speak to her then. Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? I've got no money though, I don't think. What kind of cakes do you have? I have some lovely Bakewell puddings. The sweetest marriage of almond and jam. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Alas, I'm not carrying any money with me. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry, I, I can't give them away for free. The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. Yeah, I wouldn't expect one for free. Um, well, let's find a bit more about the cakes. Let's get on the good side. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not find better in the entire county. Ooh. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? This is De Plancy. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. De Plancy. Likewise, pet. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. De Plancy. About me? <laughs> what would you possibly want to know about me? I have been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. So as you might know a little bit about local history, we could find out about uh, some of the stuff here. Let, let's get a uh, talking about the things she knows. What can you tell me about St Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? 
It's been standing here since the 12th century. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. The door is open if you'd like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. Yeah, we'll definitely have a look inside at some point. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the ah. parish register. He might be able to help you. Yeah, that'll be it. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man, and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Okay. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Okay. I think that's all we're going to get there. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. In memory of William Ager. Oh, they all have different names. In memory of Peter Black. Okay. In memory of Mabel Hurst. In memory of Benjamin Garkham. I mean, I'm never going to remember these names if they are significant for something later on, but... In memory of Millicent Smith. Yeah, never know. In memory of Henry Crozier. Oh, that's the father of the blacksmith, do we think? In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. Oh. In memory of Percival Roach. That's Roach. In Another memory of to... Barnaby Tillett. Oh, Tillett. Okay. In memory of George Paxton. So some of these things... In memory of Barnaby Tillett. Yeah, so some of these uh, connections to the uh, the village here. The trusty trowel, the barrow digger's best friend. Can we take that, do we think, or is she going to stop us? Excuse me, do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? You help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of course, thank you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. All right. Okay. Um, so, we want to go and find the father. Ah. Headstones. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife and sister. John Purchase, dearly beloved husband of Florence. God, are these going to be significant? Forever in light, Anne Kemp. We have to read all of these. Joseph Davis. Some of them are getting more. Um, Samuel Bryden. More Death details is only mothers. a shadow across the path to heaven. Oh, that's significant. <laughs> Here lies Elizabeth Farnaby. There's a fresh grave. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. William Paxton, modest and gentle of heart. <laughs> I mean, as a freshly dug grave, we've just picked up a trowel. We've got to try it, right? I may be a barrow digger, <laughs> but I'm no grave robber. Okay, maybe, maybe at another time. Um, so there is an exit there. There's also an exit this way. Um, well, let's just explore a bit more of the village. A fine spot to take a rest. Oh, it's a bit desolate though, isn't it? Is there anything else? Oh, there's a plaque. What does it say? Margaret's lookout. I wonder who Margaret is, or was. You can sit down on it. Okay. It's taken away my cursor, so I'm just letting it play out for a moment, but maybe I need to cancel it. 
Oh, I got an achievement for resting. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm happy about that. So there's another exit out to the moors, I guess. It looks like there's nothing else. There's oh, okay, we're scrolling. Got to remember that these aren't single screen. Um, like most of the adventure of the games will have like single screen things, but this one does do a little bit of uh, I've seen scrolling. Like this all over England, quite common. The locals might be alarmed if I dismantle their cairn. Okay, so we don't want to dig into that, I the guess. The moors continue for yeah. miles in this direction. I don't wish to lose my way. That's fine then. Let's uh, go back. So we can kind of double click to uh, escape out quickly. Uh, okay, well, let's go this way just to see if this leads anywhere. Mushrooms. I'm not sure if these are poisonous or edible. I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. Can I stand? I want to stand in the circle. See if it transports me anywhere. It's not gravity because it's not going to let me click inside. It's just walking around them. Okay, I was trying to stand in the circle. Just to see if it teleports me anywhere. Can we go any further? The moors stretch into the yeah. distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Okay, so that's not where we want to go. Uh, I guess we could just ex explore the the church since we're here, or at least scroll the screen over this way a little bit and have a look, see what we can have to find, a little bit more maybe. So we have at the entrance, there's another door there, what else do we have over this way? Just an exit. Uh, I guess... This leads to the church tower, I presume. Could we maybe go in here, get a good look out? It's locked. It's locked. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll have a quick look inside. There might be someone in here to talk to. Goodness me, look at these box pews. I've never seen any as tall as that before. Most unusual architecture, even for the Normans. Okay. The pews are contained within compartments that can be locked. I've seen a similar design in other Norman churches around England, but this is a particularly impressive example. Is that a necklace? Oh, maybe someone's lost it. Hmm. Someone has left a necklace hanging here. A silver cross. Sterling by the look of it. Maybe I can reunite it with its owner. Okay. Those have seen better days. The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. Fair enough. A memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. Oh, I love the kind of history like that. It's really interesting. Extraordinary craftsmanship. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. Uh, so they've got the window and the altar. Stained glass depictions of various biblical scenes. It's not my specialist area. I've no time for such things. Oh, yeah. This must be where the local vicar sacrifices the new ones. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right, so at the moment there's nothing to do in here. Um... I think this might be genuine sterling silver. Okay, so it's on the exit. Okay, we'll go to it then. It's my fault. I clicked the wrong button. Um, okay, so yeah, so we're definitely not getting anything more from this area. Let's move out to the exit. Um, let's just... The path leads on. Oh. Uh, okay, we heard the whistling, so we know we're on the right track, but maybe let's speak to the kids. This young fellow looks miserable. Oh. She has a puckish little face. Puckish face, interesting. Hello there, my name's Thomasina. Yeah? <laughs> Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. How are you? Go away! Goodbye. <laughs> okay, fine. Good day, little one. What's your name? Hello, miss. I'm Jane and this is my brother, Wally. Oh, Lovely to meet so, you. So cute. I'm Thomasina. I'd introduce you to my dolls, but they're drying out at the moment. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was her bath day. Oh, she sounds so cute. Obviously those dolls are going to rise up and murder everyone, but yeah, for now. 
It's just cute. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, Miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Wally doesn't say much. He's mardy with me because he's bored, Miss. He thinks he's too old to play with dolls. I see. Where are your parents? They're picking apples from the big tree in our yard. Daddy and I sell them at the market. That sounds nice. But they don't mind us playing at the vet, as long as we don't touch the almond's horn. What's that? What is the almond's horn? It's over there on that rock. Yeah, I see something there. Maybe it's like another fossil. Do you mean the fossil? It's the almond's horn. Daddy said we should never touch it. It will make the god angry. Ooh. What god? Alan, of course. Okay, um, so we could just like be scientific about it or just go along with the story. I actually want to know a bit more about the story because um, we know that there's... Look, so far we haven't found out what's going on in the story but we know this is kind of a, a spooky kind of almost horror kind of game so there's something... something's going to go horribly wrong at some point so maybe there is an ancient god who's uh, going to just, you know, destroy everyone. How wonderful! I'll be sure not to touch it. I wouldn't want to anger the gods. Sensible. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... Jane! No, miss. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah. I swear. Oh, no. Goodbye. Bye, miss. She knows. It's no dolls. They speak to her at night. So, uh, we have the fossil. I want to look at it. I'm not going to touch it. Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilised ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. Yeah, but we're not going to try and take it while the kids are there. Damp ragdolls have been laid out to dry in the dreary sun. So we'll clearly rise up and kill us all. There's a shrub Sweet there. little flowers. Let's grab some. Maybe we can replace the ones in the church. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. Did I pick any up? No, I wanted to pick some up. Oh well, maybe... Can we dig some up? Oh, I keep wanting to drag things. Click. I can't see how that will help me. Oh, I was just wanted some. Uh, so I think that is everything here. Okay, let's go find that the Reverend. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're getting towards the end of... Uh, wherever you want to do. I don't want to go too much more than about 40 minutes or so. Yeah, we can hear him. Let's go over this way then. Maybe we can find the... Here he is! Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh god, that's, that's disturbing. What is he doing? It's a zombie. Is he on there to kill him? Oh my god. I'm very sorry. Oh, the shame. This malaise will not pass. Oh, the nausea. I need your help, young lady. Tell me what you need. Let the blood from my arm. Oh god. Excuse me? Caught me. I beg you. The vicar looks dreadfully ill. Um. <laughs> vomit. I don't wish to look too closely. <laughs> yeah, but blame you. The vicar's spectacles lie broken on the forest floor. Oh, God. Okay, do we have anything that could cut him? Not really. Are you sure this is the only way, Father? I beg you. It's the only cure for this torturous malady. I really don't think it is, but she's not... Are you sure? Okay. It's the... So we need to actually... Well, we'll, we'll have to... Uh, I don't know. Do I have anything? We can back him with a trowel. The trowel's blade is dull and rusted. I need something that will provide a cleaner cut. Maybe the necklace? I don't think it's sharp enough. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, nothing else is going to do it. Okay, well, we'll just leave him there. Let's see if we can grab his uh, spectacles. 
Ouch! Oh. The broken lens is ah. extremely sharp. Okay, can we... The Vicar's Spectacle. Okay, uh, oh, can I put the glove on? Glove with spectacles. Perhaps I shouldn't risk soiling this glove until I find its owner. Okay, so I can't... I thought maybe I could protect myself with it, but there's nothing else. Handkerchief, maybe? This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. Oh, it worked. Nice. This should work. Broken glass. Let's slice up the vigor. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I shall do as you ask, Father. <laughs> yeah, this is not a kid's game, by the way. Got an achievement for it, so uh, must be good. He was whistling so happily earlier. <laughs> Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. Oh, well, that's weird. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. That's... Okay, yeah, this game's gonna be full of just unsettling stuff like that. Okay. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. What ails you, Father Roach? I, I, just ate a rotten berry. That's all. No, that's I like not to it. Pick blackberries for my supper. You see, they are quite delicious as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. I wish we had met in different circumstances. Are you from Beaulieu originally? I was born in our very own St. Edmunds. It's quite the story. Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. And lo, did her waters break right there and then in that pew. One could say that you were born into your role, Father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. St. Edmund's is a fine building. Thank you for saying so. It's hard work keeping her in good shape, but our congregation is always willing to lend a hand in the Lord's name. What is it like being the vicar here? Every day is a blessing, my child. I have a great love for our parish, and the Lord looks after us. What about your congregation? Numbers have fallen over the years, I must say. But those that remain are faithful and full of his spirit. Okay, so we must know about Leonard. I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register? No need. I remember it now. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you aided me, so... Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, let's just uh, find out what else he knows about the place. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I can't say I've heard of it. It's supposedly a famous local landmark. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. Mm, I don't quite believe that, but uh, never mind. What can you tell me about Bewley? It's a quiet town. The railway line, which I presume you arrived by, is the only news of note we've had here for years. I've heard the new station has received a mixed reaction. <laughs> I've heard many a debate, it's true. But my role is not to adjudicate on that matter. I'm very busy in my own work, you see. Uh, do we go there now? I mean, that's 
I guess we are. Maybe we'll go there and that's probably a good point to leave it. Let's go there and we'll see just if anything amazing happens. And then if not, we'll, uh, we'll end the episode. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Yeah, I don't think cutting yourself and bleeding really is good health advice. But at least this should hopefully unlock uh, our map, maybe, so we can go there our own at uh, a later date if we need to. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Ms. Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. I have a feeling I want one of those cakes for some reason. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors, and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Oh, I guess wondering what we're talking way? about. No uh... idea. Oh god, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's Macbeth. Um, I'm not familiar with Hamlet or Richard the Third. Could be a uh, Richard the Second. It's not Third, Second. Richard the Second. Correct. Yes. You are well read, Miss Bateman. Hell yes. Studying the Knew work that. of the Bard is one of my favourite pastimes. Follow me. We're going to find out a bit more about this bench. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Or as far as the curve of the earth. Beautiful, is it not? Uh, I did say they were rather desolate, but I'm not going to... <sighs> Say that to him here. He obviously likes them. And to be honest with you, they, they, uh, mo the moors are an interesting thing. They are both beautiful and desolate. Um, but we'll get into that another time. Indeed. The moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Quite Some easy. look at these Probably moors so. and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? Uh, yeah, we'll tell the truth. I, personally, I don't, and I'm guessing she doesn't either. I was brought up Anglican. Oh, okay. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But, but what happened to my father eventually made me question things. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Oh, flashback. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. This is where we were at the beginning of the game, I think. Or maybe not. Uh, yes, yeah, we were here. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. <laughs> good. Now, let's so see your father. Something about young child children's voices when they they like kind of softly spoken like that. Just so cute. 
Oh, we actually get to play in the flashback. Um, right, well, we're at 15 minutes here, so I think I'm going to leave it here. And we'll find out exactly what happened in our childhood in the next episode. Um, yeah, it's a very story-driven game. I'm very excited to find out what is going on. Hopefully you've enjoyed it so far. Um, not super loads of action, but I think this is a, a very atmospheric type of game. And I'm definitely looking forward to, to finding out more about the story behind this thing. I'm enjoying it a lot. Hopefully uh, you are too. Um, if you have, please do leave a like. And I hope you'll come back for the next episode to find out a little bit more about uh, the sinister goings-on of this village. We need, need to find out what's happening. I'll see you then. Goodbye.